What's up guys? So I wanted to go over something really quick because I get questions on it all the time and I don't have the perfect answer for everybody's situation. So I wanted to go over just how um, different zeros on an Armard Glock 19 shooting 147 grain HST. Okay, so this is all information I got off of a ballistic calculator. It's not like I went out there and I shot at all these distances and measured and all that stuff. I didn't do that. I just went for rough estimates and your, uh, your mileage may vary on this. So I want you guys to take it with a grain of uh, salt, but understand that it's, it's good idea to understand what you're looking at here. So like I said, we're going over uh, 147 HSTs. Or, or at least that's what I used as a basis for this. And I'm, I'm talking about on an Armard uh, Glock 19. Okay, so Glock 19, Armard, milled, not on a uh, Duick Defense or one of those other mounts. So as we go about it, so let's say you wanted to do a 10-yard zero, right? So some people may want a 10, somebody may want a 15, somebody may want a 25, you never know. And everybody has their own preferences on things. Some people, it's it's based on eyesight and based on shooting ability. Some people can't shoot good groups at 25 yet. So they need to practice that or they have to bag the gun and, and do a very unnatural uh, zeroing process or shooting process to get their zero, which isn't bad. And, and it's not the wrong way to do it in any way. Everybody does it. We do it with rifles all the time. So it's totally possible. It's not something that's crazy. Or, or unheard of. Now, um, I wanted to show three different or more common zeros for the RMR. And I have mainly used the 25 yard and recently switched to a 15. And I'll explain that later and why I did that. But to start out with, so we have a 10 yard zero, right? So we start with the zero point, all right? Your RMR is about almost an inch above your, your uh, center of bore, okay? So you can see here the line of sight, okay? I didn't use any colors or anything special, just straight lines and, and curvy lines. So line of sight is a straight line. That's the line of you looking all the way out to whatever you're looking at and the bullet path from uh, exiting the barrel all the way to your zeros and until 100 I went, so up to 100 yards. So we have our zero at 10 yards, right? Uh, from, from the barrel to the 10 yard zero is about 0.9. So that is the distance from your RMR to the uh, center of bore. So if you're zeroing at 10, okay? So you already just went about an inch up, which is about what's gonna happen for most guns until you get to your zero uh, on the 19s, at least with an RMR. And all the way, uh, as it passes that nine, it obviously continues to rise until gravity takes an effect around that 30 yard line. And then it starts to drop a little bit. And once it starts to drop, it gets back to another zero point, which is kind of cool to know that it's a 10 a 1050. When you're zeroing it at 10 yards, it's also a 50 yard zero. And then drops back down to a zero point of 50 and then drops off at uh, 8.7 inches uh, underneath uh, your line of sight at 100 yards. So pretty cool to know, understand. The standard deviation when you're talking about one to 50 yards is about an inch and, uh, well, almost an inch and a half or a little bit past an inch and a half. And the the standard deviation from uh, zero to 100 is is almost nine and a half inches. So you're, you're traveling not too bad. So that's 10 inches, that's barely a foot or almost a foot, and and that's between zero and 100. Kinda cool. So cool to know about the 10 yard zero. Then we move on to the 15 yard zero, right? So the 15 yard zero, that one we, once again, we zero at 15, that's where, sorry about this mistake I made. I made the mistake of doing this with pen at first. 
Um, so your line of sight, your bullet path meets at 15. So it travels that one inch all the way to 15. And then as it crests or over the line of sight slightly and gravity takes an effect at 25 ish yards, it only, it only goes up higher or as high as 0.2 above your line of sight, which is, you probably won't notice it at 25, I promise. And then as it drops out, it, it lands on 34 yards again, it zeroes out. So your 15 yard zero is actually a 34 yard zero as well. Just another food for thought. And then it drops off drastically, or not drastically, but it, it continues to drop off because of gravity and uh, loss of, obviously it's a velocity. And you land around uh, underneath your line of sight about 10.8 inches. So your standard deviation for a 15 yard zero is zero to 50 yards, which is 1.3 inches. Kind of cool. Good to know that that's your standard deviation around 50 yards. is It's only about almost an inch and a half negligible, uh, especially when shooting humans. Uh, and then we, we talk about the zero to 100 standard deviation on the 15 yard zero, and that's 11 inches. So that's almost a foot of difference between uh, zero and a hundred when you're shooting. So something to understand when you're shooting a target at a hundred, probably want to hold a little high. And if you're going for a good chest shot, a good top of the head is going to get you some good hits. Hopefully if, if you do everything right and put all the good inputs into the gun. So now we move on to a 25 yard zero. So the 25 yard zero is what a lot of people zero at. It's, it's a standard zero for a lot of stuff. That's what your irons are usually zeroed at, depending on the manufacturers and, and if they're still doing it that way. Um, so your line of sight, once again, zero to 100, starting at, uh, or your bullet path, bullet path starting at uh, negative 0.9 and then moving up to zero. So it stays pretty flat uh, from, from the, the 10 until a little bit past 30. It stays relatively flat trajectory uh, it crests at 20 and 25. So your your 25 yard zero is actually a 20 yard zero and a 25 yard zero. It stays really flat in that area uh, or at least a leveled. And then gravity takes an effect once again and it never crests over the top of your uh, line of sight. A 25 yard zero doesn't crest over. It stays at it and then goes down. So gravity takes an effect. At 50 yards, you're hitting about an inch and a half under so you have to hold over a little bit or not it, it's once again negligible and then uh, depending on what you're shooting people or little steel targets and then all the way down to 11 inches 11.4 uh, inches underneath your line of sight uh, and that's at 100 yards so once again you got to hold pretty high to get that that uh those good hits at 100 and, and obviously those are usually for play, but you never know. Maybe you have to put something down that far. You, you can't presuppose those situations. So it's good to understand what your zero on your RMR and on your gun specific to, to what you're carrying can do. So hope you guys, in, uh, oh, I'm sorry. And then the standard deviations for this zero to 50 yards is about 1.4 inches. And then for for 100 or 0 to 100 is 11.4 inches so nothing crazy not uh none of these are way out of bounds or or way out of out of the thought process or ability of most people okay just understand what your zero can do understand which zero you want to choose according to what you do and what you're using that gun for okay i'm not going to tell you which one to use uh specifically because I, I don't know what your lifestyle's like. I don't know what you have to uh, deal with. And depending on your altitude and your temperature and all these different things, these all will vary slightly, okay? So keep that in mind, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's really weird. It's not a normal video that I do, but I hope this is something that's helpful for a lot of people that are trying to figure out where to zero their RMRs. All right, have a good one.